everyone. Welcome to our first lecture on neuroanatomy. This is learning module number one. To start out with each of the lectures, or each of the week's topics, I should say, I'd like to relate it back to our course objective, or one of the course objectives that's listed on the syllabus. So our course objective for this particular topic is to identify the general structural characteristics of the central nervous system and their primary functions in the control of movement. So we'll be looking at various structures specifically with, with regard to their function regarding movement. There's obviously a lot of structures involved in the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, but we're only looking at those that are involved with the control of voluntary movement. Now you may be wondering, why is this important? I do also like to include something addressing this topic um, to kind of bring it into perspective as to why you need to know this. So possessing basic knowledge of the neuromuscular system forms the foundation for understanding the control of movement. In other words, the better your understanding of the structures that are involved with controlling movement, the more you understand how movement is controlled. So having this foundational knowledge is really going to increase your comprehension of how these things happen. The first part of this lecture covers the neuron, basic anatomy of the neuron and the different types. So let's look at the various structures of these two neurons. The reason why I have two images is one really gives you or identifies the structures and then the one on the right conceptualizes these structures regarding their function. So let's look at the uh, blue neuron first. Um, the neuron itself is considered the basic component of the nervous system and it provides a way for information to be received and transmitted throughout the body. Another way that we can refer to this is a nerve cell. So those two terms are interchangeable, nerve cell and neuron. As far as the structures go, the general structures, the first thing we'll look at are the dendrites. These are the projections those blue projections coming out from that large cell body. These extensions from the cell body receive information from other neurons. By information, we can refer to those as neural impulses, which are a form of electrical information. So if we look at our other diagram on the right, this is represented as the input zone. This is where the dendrites are. They're receiving information from other neurons. And clearly, we can have many dendrites. And this is just a simplified representation of a neuron, but you can have very, very extensive branching of dendrites. Another structure on the neuron is the cell body, or soma. That's the blue structure, the center of the blue structure specifically. Um, so this contains the nucleus of the neuron and when the cell body kind of narrows down or starts to taper into that long extension of the axon, that area is referred to as the axon hillock. This is also called the integration zone because this is where inputs are combined and transformed within the cell body and ultimately get transmitted to another neuron via the output zone. So with this axon hillock, that transitions into the axon, commonly referred to as a nerve fiber. This is an extension of the neuron cell body and it transmits that neural impulse to other neurons. For example, within the nervous system or perhaps directly to a muscle. This area, the axon, is referred to as the conduction zone of the neuron because it conducts the neural information, which is essentially an electrical signal. Some other structures associated with the axon are the kind of yellowish white tubes that you see surrounding the axon. These are the Schwann cells. These are myelin. They're formed of myelin, which is a fatty substance that insulates the axon 
and it helps to improve conduction or improve transmittal of that neural impulse or electrical signal. So those are Schwann cells composed of myelin, a fatty or lipid-based substance. We also have gaps within those, or I should say between those Schwann cells. These are called nodes of Ranvier. The nodes of Ranvier really help to increase the speed that the impulse can be transmitted down that axon. So the insulating um, characteristic itself of the myelin plus those gaps, those nodes of Ranvier, that those two factors combined really help to increase the speed of conduction of that neural impulse. And then we have the axon terminals. This is the very end. It's represented as a synaptic terminals um, on the figure. But these axon terminals are branching out, basically. They're um, collateral branches of the axon and they spread out because they are they are ultimately going to be connected to something else. Other neurons, the dendrites of other neurons, or perhaps if we're talking about a motor neuron, directly innervating particular muscle fibers for that motor unit. And this area, the synaptic terminals or the axon terminal, is the output zone because the information is being transmitted out from that neuron. We do have different types of neuron. The structure that we saw was just general, but the actual structure for specific types of neurons can vary. Um, the first type of neuron we'll be looking at is something called a sensory or afferent neuron. You'll see these two terms used interchangeably for sensory information. So with a sensory or afferent neuron, the nerve cell is responding to environmental stimuli. So the image that's depicted here, the sensory receptors are receptors in the skin. So for example, if you press on the tip of your finger or something very hot touches the tip of your finger, then those sensory receptors in your skin will become activated, which means that an electrical impulse or neural signal will be generated and it'll be transmitted up the axon of that particular sensory receptor and it can be it can be transmitted as far as the brain or the spinal cord but as you can see the structure is slightly different from the one that we saw um, where the cell body is located kind of midway along the length of the axon in between the receptors and the axon terminals so our sensory neurons are taking sensory information or information from the environment and sending it to the central nervous system. We also have a motor neuron or an efferent neuron. Again, those terms are used interchangeably. This is an example of a motor neuron where we have a very large cell body, a long axon, and the axon terminals are innervating muscle fibers. So for our motor neurons, information or the neural impulse or electrical signal is coming from the brain or the spinal cord and then that information is being transmitted down to the level of muscle, organ, or glands. And then we have interneurons. This is our third and last type of neuron. Interneurons are considered specialized nerve cell. They originate and terminate in the brain or the spinal cord, and their function is to essentially connect the motor neurons and the sensory neurons. So they're a middleman, so to speak, or a bridge between these axons. And that doesn't mean that they necessarily have a lesser role in terms of the overall scheme of things, because the majority of neurons are actually interneurons. So their role is very, very important in terms of transmitting and conducting information um, between sensory and motor neurons and vice versa.